Okay, students in macro, it's been a little while since I've added a new video for, or anything for Unit 3, but I need to do this now, so I'm doing this. Um, what we're going to do is revisit the ADAS model, but we're going to use it to illustrate some macro troubles. We actually talked about some of this when we were dealing with the initial impact six to nine months, between six and nine months, I should say. But now we need to see where it actually manifests as an actual problem. So we have our aggregate supply curve set up. Normalized recessionary CPI for Keynesian segment, upward sloping intermediate, potential GDP, which is what the real GDP sub F stands for, for classical, which is the vertical segment. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a model here showing AD and AS in motion. But notice, first of all, the time frame is longer than a year. This means the time frame is long enough for AD and AS to move in such a way that macro equilibrium leaves the segment of aggregate supply where it begins. The problem is I'm not sure where it begins yet. I'm not sure where it ends yet. So we have to use some clues and some deductive reasoning to put this together. You know, but the last year and a half is that total spending has been increasing and in a sign of stopping. The two macro curve shift when spending increases. Well, if you paid attention during Unit 2, it's also our theme. It's aggregate demand, and when spending increases, the curve is going to shift in what direction? Again, if you were paying attention during Unit 1 and Unit 2, you know the increased direction for a curve means it shifts to the right. So that's the first thing we know for sure based upon what we just saw, and that's all well and good. There's one problem, though. I don't know where it's starting. The second thing it says here is that real GDP has increased for several months, but then seems to have maxed out during the last month and a half. Maxed out. What is the name for that maximum level of real GDP obtainable within a business cycle? Take a moment to think about it. At this level of GDP, we do not have any recessionary or cyclical unemployment. Yep, that's potential GDP. So the thing is, real GDP was increasing at first, okay? If AD is moving to the right in the Keynesian segment, real GDP can increase. Notice we have horizontal variation. If aggregate demand shifts to the right in the intermediate segment, we have horizontal variation. Real GDP can increase. So we don't know if it started Keynesian or intermediate. But we know that if real GDP is maxed out, it has finished in the classical segment. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to borrow one of my tools from down below here. I'd make sure I prepped up this time so I wasn't drawing from scratch. And I'm going to put AD number two where it's crossing AS in the classical segment. And I'm also going to put a nice blue arrow here that shows AD shifting to the right. And so there we are. So we know that AD started somewhere to the left or something like that. We don't know where it started exactly but it started at least in the intermediate segment. So let me also make sure I put that note there, okay? Ugh, man, that was terrible, let's fix that. Okay, AD ended up in the classical segment. So I know that. Now, so unemployment is very low. Well, this is no surprise. Potential GDP means we have no recessionary unemployment, which means that the only unemployment we have would be frictional. People make choices to leave their jobs. Our structural people's skills aren't current with the economy, and those aren't major deals, but it's a bigger deal when it's cyclical or recessionary. But this last thing, price levels, CPI measures price levels. It's a vertical axis, like real GDP is the horizontal axis. They have been increasing like crazy, and it seems we will have an 8% rate of inflation by the end of the year. First of all, I want you to notice if AD was moving to the right in the Keynesian segment, it is a horizontal line. A horizontal line has a fixed vertical height. If AD were shifting to the right and it started Keynesian, it would not say that the CPI increased the entire time. It would have to say the CPI was low and stable at first, but then began to increase. But that's not what it says. It says they've been increasing like crazy the entire time. Another thing to note is we have an 8% rate of inflation. Think about this. During the last 20 years, the average rate of inflation for the United States was between 2 and 2.5%. 2 
8% is a very high rate of inflation for the United States. But because the CPI increased the entire time, because real GDP increased at first and then maxed out, we know that AD had to start in the intermediate segment. So I'm going to go ahead and select this here. I'll copy that and bring that one on up here. I'm going to put AD crossing in there. And then I'm going to do a couple of last minute things. I need to locate our starting macro equilibrium and then our new macro equilibrium and verify that they match what is being described to the right. So starting CPI is here, starting real GDP is here. And again, please forgive me if this takes a minute. That's not as straight as I would like it to be, but oh well, we shall deal. There's the new CPI up there, and I want you all to notice that the new real GDP is the potential GDP. It's the real GDP sub F. So I'm going to go ahead and put a nice right shifting arrow over here. And then I'm going to put a nice up shifting arrow over there. So I've got those in place. And then I'm going to put our starting real uh, CPI in real GDP. So CPI with a one real GDP with a one. I'm going to move those ones that are subscripted nicely here. And so there we go. And let's see, and I'll put the CPI sub two last just so we have it at that point. And that needs to be, of course, in blue. CPI with a two. Boom. All right. Now, y'all will be doing this with pencil and pen. The stuff that's in black should be gray pencil or black pen, and the stuff that's in blue should be blue pencil or pen. So let's take a look here. Okay, let me also finish by adding over here. AD started in the intermediate segment. Shifted to the right into the classical Actually, let me be specific of aggregate supply and shifted to the right into the classical segment of aggregate supply. Okay. So total spending increased like crazy. AD went to the rights. Real GDP increased and then maxed out. We went from real GDP 1 to real GDP sub F. CPI increased like crazy by about 8%, and unemployment is very low. This fits the description of everything we see here. Now, of course, you'd recognize this as a problem that we saw in Unit 2. Since the CPI is increasing by a very large amount over the last 18 months, what's the type of problem we have? CPI measures price levels. Price levels are increasing significantly. What's that called? Inflation. But which kind of inflation? Total spending made inflation rise. Inflation caused by increases in spending is called demand pull inflation. And since the rate is very high for the United States, we have a problem. The problem we have here is severe demand pull inflation. Now, of course, the question that comes up is, well, what can be done about this? We're going to address that in another video because it's going to depend upon if the economy is self-regulating or if the economy is not self-regulating. If the economy self-regulates, if something's going to happen to correct this inflation without requiring the government or the Federal Reserve to use policy, we should let the economy self-regulate. But if there's overwhelming evidence this problem will continue, then we cannot let it stand. We're going to have to do something about it. But this ADAS graph sets up one possible macro problem that fiscal or monetary policy or a mixture of both can respond to. Now, here's our other possible macro problem to deal with. And so once again, aggregate supply, CPI, consumer price index, measuring aggregate price levels for the vertical height, real GDP, measuring total production spending for the horizontal value, normalized recessionary CPI with the Keynesian segment of aggregate supply, potential GDP, real GDP sub F with the classical segment, and we of course have our intermediate segment in here. Now the first thing it states here is total spending has declined by $500 billion. 
Which curve is affected by total spending? Aggregate demand. Is it going to be shifting left or right? When spending declines, AD shifts to the left. And is it shifting a little or a lot? $500 billion, 2.5% of our total GDP is a huge drop in spending. So AD should have left by a large degree. And notice much of it's consumer spending. Double ouch. The whole thing is I don't know where AD starts in ends yet, but I know it's shifting to the left. The second thing it says is real GDP has decreased steadily and is far below potential GDP. In other words, even at the beginning of the 18 months, we were not at potential GDP, we were below potential. So which segment of aggregate supply can AD never be crossing during these 18 months? Potential GDP is associated with the vertical segment of aggregate supply, which is called the classical segment. So AD has not been in the classical segment of AS during the past 18 months. We know that for sure. So shifting left, it could be shifting left intermediate into Keynesian, shifting left intermediate, shifting left Keynesian. Unemployment rates are well above 6%. Factories are laying off workers due to slow sales. This doesn't relate to the graph, but this is telling you, if you don't believe this is a problem, think again here. This is describing cyclical unemployment, recessionary unemployment, which is actually harmful to the economy, but it doesn't tell me where things start and finish. Well, price levels, that's our CPI, dropped for about a year. AD is not in the classical segment. If AD shifts left in the intermediate segment, the CPI will drop. But then they have stabilized at a low level for this decade. Normalized recessionary CPI is a low stable level that we find at the bottom of the business cycle. Last part of recession, trough into recovery. So this describes, and we'll type this out here and then we're gonna construct the graph now. AD shifted to the left from the intermediate segment of AAS into the Keynesian segment of AS. And I've got my handy dandy graphs down here. Number one, copy, paste, put it there in the middle. And we don't have to make this completely melodramatic, but it's got to move a pretty good ways in that Keynesian segment based on what we've seen. And so let's go ahead and put the arrows. We always start off with gray pencil or black pen, and we change our color to blue. We always change the color to blue. This is to demonstrate, I repeat, this is to demonstrate uh, the change from the original position to the later position. So we're going to mark where the real GDP number one and, excuse me, I did not want it to look like that. The CPI number one will be found and then we'll label them at the end. And then we'll do this, and CPI sub R, I want you all to notice because it's crossing Keynesian, CPI sub R is the second CPI value, so I don't need to draw another label. I kind of wish I'd done that one in blue, but it's not a big deal. It can be black, it's fine. It's just the main thing is like we have to have a label regardless. By the way, one thing I neglected to mention, we have to fully label the CPI sub R and the real GDP sub F. We have to. The reason why we have to is because of the fact that the time frame is longer than a year. We're no longer going to be starting and finishing in the same segment of aggregate supply. It's not going to happen anymore. And the reason why it's not going to happen anymore is because the time frame is long enough for us to be moving through phases of the business cycle, not just within the same phase. So I've got our shifters there for everything else. Well, I'm going to see if I can copy and paste this stuff over here and save myself a little bit of oops work. Make the video a little shorter at this end here. Boom. There we go. CPI sub one. Make sure that's transparent. Let's see here. And I ask you all to please forgive me here as I'm doing this. You know, I know it's not the most erudite thing to be saying, but it's still a part of the whole deal. Okay. 
Let's go back over to here. That thing should be white. Okay. Real GDP number two. There we go. And boom. Now we're done. Okay, let's double check to make sure this matches the description. Total spending is decreasing. AD is shipping to the left. It's shipping left by a wide margin. It's a big decrease in there. Real GDP is decreasing the entire time. We have high rates of unemployment. CPI drops and stabilize. Perfect. Now, based upon what's going on, spending is dropping. Unemployment is increasing. Real GDP is dropping. And uh, all this other stuff that's going on here, what kind of problem do we have? Well, it's describing one of the phases of the business cycle. Which phase of the business cycle has spending drop, real GDP drop, unemployment rise, price levels drop or stabilize? If you said recession or recession or trough, you're on the right track. This is going to be a recession. Over 6% unemployment. Currently, we're about 4%. $500 billion drop in spending. Is that mild or severe? If you said severe recession, you're right. Now, of course, people are going to notice this and say, well, we got to do something about this, you know. And again, I understand that's our knee-jerk reaction. But the question is, you know, will the economy self-regulate or not? And the answer is, well, we're not sure just yet because what we don't have here is information about the leading economic indicators. So the thing is, in order to be able to determine if the economy self-regulates or not, Okay, we're going to have to, I repeat, we're going to have to uh, check some leading indicators. So let me go back and wrap this video up. So the whole thing is we're taking a look at two major problems that happen in the macro economy, and we're finding ways in order to deal with the, these problems. But we need to be able to define the problems. So our next video will deal with does the economy self-regulate or not. Thank you.